From my own research and evaluation of the biography of Muhammad, I could not find much love from Allah towards him. Do you agree? The word love in Arabic is hub. From among 114 chapters, surahs, 6,236 verses, ayat, and about 77,000 words in the Quran, the word love and its derivatives appear as follows. Love for Allah three times. Conditional love, three times. Not related to Allah, 28 times. An abysmally small total of 34 times, in none of them is there an expression of Allah's love for Muhammad. Fortune favored Muhammad when Khadija bin Khuwailid, a 40-year-old widow, no longer in her first youth, who had already been twice married and had several children, proposed to marry him. Khadija, allegedly, considering her old age, gave Muhammad several children. There were four daughters, Zainab, Ruqayya, Fatima, and Umm Kulthum. But for what an Arab was then and still is, a great misfortune, all her sons died at an early age. Tradition lists them variously. One was Al-Qasim, who is said to have died when he was two and from whom his father took the kunya of Abu Al-Qasim, which was retained by him. There also seems to have been another boy called Abdullah, from the Arabian culture point of view, not having male children is not a sign of divine blessing. From Maria al qutbiyah Copt, who was given to him as a sex slave, Ibrahim, who died in infancy also. His daughter Fatima married Ali bin Abi Talib and gave birth to two boys, Hassan and Hussein. Sahih al-Bukhari hadith 4.429, Night Journey, narrated by Malik bin Sasa. The Prophet said, al Bulaq, a white animal, smaller than a mule and bigger than a donkey, was brought to me and I set out with Gabriel. When I reached the nearest heaven, we saw a man sitting with some people on his right and some on his left. When he looked towards his right, he laughed, and when he looked towards his left, he wept. Then he said, Welcome, O pious prophet and pious son. I asked Gabriel, Who is he? He replied, He is Adam, and the people on his right and left are the souls of his offspring. Those on his right are the people of paradise, and those on his left are the people of hell. And when he looks towards his right, he laughs, and when he looks towards his left, he weeps. Anas said, Abu Dahr added that the Prophet met Adam, Idris, Moses, Jesus, and Abraham. He, Abu Dahr, did not mention on which heaven they were, but he mentioned that the Prophet met Adam on the nearest heaven and Abraham on the sixth heaven. Then we ascended to the seventh heaven, where I met and greeted Abraham, who said, You are welcomed, O son and the Prophet. Then I was shown al-Bayt al-Ma'mur, i.e. Allah's house. Then fifty prayers were enjoined on me. I descended till I met Moses, who asked me, What have you done? I said, Fifty prayers have been enjoined on me. He said, I know the people better than you because I had the hardest experience to bring Bani Israel to obedience. Your followers cannot put up with such obligation. So return to your Lord and request him to reduce the number of prayers. I returned and requested Allah for reduction, and he made it 40. I returned and met Moses, and has a similar discussion, and then returned again to Allah for reduction, and he made it 30, then 20, then 10, and then I came to Moses, who repeated the same advice. Ultimately, Allah reduced it to five. When I came to Moses again, he said, What have you done? I said, Allah has made it five only. He repeated the same advice, but I said that I surrendered to Allah's final order. Allah's apostle was addressed by Allah. I have decreed my obligation and have reduced the burden on my slaves, and I shall reward a single good deed as if it were ten good deeds. Sunan of Abu Dawud Hadith 247, narrated by Abdullah ibn Umar. There were 50 prayers obligatory in the beginning. And in the beginning of Islam, washing seven times because of sexual defilement was obligatory. And washing the urine from the cloth seven times was obligatory. The Apostle of Allah kept on praying to Allah until the number of prayers was reduced to five, and washing because of sexual defilement was allowed only once, and washing the urine from the clothes was also permitted only once. Al-Tirmidhi Hadith 5762 
narrated by Abdullah bin Abbas. When some of the companions of Allah Messenger were sitting, he came out, and when he came near them, he heard them discussing. One of them said, Allah had taken Abraham as a friend. Another said, he spoke direct to Moses. And another said, Jesus was Allah's word and spirit. And another said, Allah chose Adam. Allah's messenger then came out to them and said, I have heard what you said. And you wonder that Abraham was Allah's friend, as indeed he was. That Moses was Allah's confidant, as indeed he was. That Jesus was his spirit and word, as indeed he was and that Adam was chosen by Allah, as indeed he was. I am the one whom Allah loves, and this is no boast. On the day of resurrection, I shall be the bearer of the banner of praise, under which will be Adam and the others, and this is no boast. I shall be the first intercessor, and the first whose intercession is accepted on the day of resurrection, and this is no boast. I shall be the first to rattle the knocker of paradise, and Allah will open for me and bring me into it, accompanied by the poor ones among the believers. And this is no boast. I shall be the most honorable in Allah's estimation among those of earliest and latest times. And this is no boast. Muhammad's humility is as limitless as his mendacity. Not to have male children is definitely not a sign of divine blessing. To have Muhammad's grandchildren and his son-in-law killed in the prime of their life is also not a divine blessing. For Allah to ordain upon Muhammad and his followers 50 prayers a day is without a shadow of a doubt not a divine blessing. 50 prayers a day constitutes praying every 28.8 minutes of the day. There will be no time to sleep, to eat, to work, to rest, to have leisure and to have sex. 50 prayers a day constitutes a punishment and not a divine blessing. It was only due to the intervention of Moses that saved Muhammad and his religion from oblivion. Muhammad accepted Allah's ordinance without understanding the magnitude of the burden that Allah was imposing upon him and his followers. Muhammad thought that the greater the number of prayers, the greater was his religion. It was Moses who had the intelligence to realize that Allah's ordinance was unreasonable, impractical, and unacceptable and accordingly advised Muhammad repeatedly to negotiate better terms with Allah until ultimately he had to reduce the number of prayers to a more manageable five a day. Muhammadan Islam owes Moses an incredible debt of gratitude. The Quran portrays an Allah who so loved Muhammad that he was always ready to defend him, protect him, and advise him even unto the most intimate of his personal affairs with the most appropriate and relevant verses that justified any and all of his actions, deeds, and thoughts. This perception is not at all supported by the most relevant facts that are mentioned in the ahadith, such as Allah did not see fit to talk directly to the allegedly best of all his prophets. All his communications were through the angel Gabriel, an angel who is only mentioned in the Bible and was received secondhand. Allah did not allow Muhammad to have any living male children. Allah later deprived him of his most beloved male relatives and descendants, such as his nephew Ali, his grandchildren Hassan and Hussein, and Al Zubair. Allah's love manifested itself in requiring Muhammad and his followers to pray 50 times a day, an onerous and impossible task to follow. This was later abrogated and reduced to the much more reasonable five only because of the very opportune and intelligent intervention of the Prophet Moses and his acumen in advising Muhammad to negotiate a more manageable number of prayers with Allah. Without the intervention of Moses, the Israelite and Hebrew prophet, there would have been no Muhammadan cult of Islam. The Quran asserts that Allah did not show Muhammad or his followers a single miracle unlike those that he bestowed upon several of his more beloved Hebrew prophets. Allah did not give Muhammad any warning about his time of death, thus depriving his followers from getting an authentic and comprehensive Quran in his lifetime. The after effects of this omission caused Muhammad's followers to fragment into as many, if not more, sects as those that he vehemently condemned among the Jews and Christians. In conclusion, and as usual with Muhammad, his Quran and the Ahadith 
we always have only Muhammad's unsubstantiated and unwitnessed words and events that what he is telling us is the truth. We have also conclusively demonstrated that Allah is actually Muhammad's own alter ego and hence is not God. Based upon all the facts that we reveal, we leave it to our readers and listeners to decide. Three times. Conditional love, three times. Not related to Allah, 28 times. An abysmally small total of 34 times in none of them is there an expression of Allah's love for Muhammad. Four From my own research and evaluation of the biography of Muhammad, I could not find much love from Allah towards him. Do you agree? The word love in Arabic is hub. From among 114 chapters, surahs, 6,236 verses, ayat, and about 77,000 words in the Quran, the word love and its derivatives appear as follows. Love for Allah and several children. There were four daughters, Zainab, Ruqayya, Fatima, and Umm Kulthum. But for what an Arab was then and still is, a great misfortune, all her sons died at an early age. Tradition lists them variously. One in favored Muhammad when Khadija bin Khuwailid, a 40-year-old widow, no longer in her first youth, who had already been twice married and had several children, proposed to marry him. Khadija, allegedly, considering her old age, gave Muhammad